Hi everyone, welcome to my interview with Chef Maria Campbell of Cooks Who Care. I'm going to read a very short description just so I can do justice to the work that they do. Cooks Who Care is a Philly-based organization that supports the well-being of people working in all facets of the food and beverage industry. Founded by Maria and her husband Scott, they, they are dedicated to building a community that supports employers and employees as they strive to prioritize physical, mental and the financial health both on and off the job. And I have to say that Maria is a great connector. She's always finding very interesting people doing interesting things and providing value to her community. So thank you, Maria, welcome. I'm so honored and you know, Love Letters to Chefs has been an inspiration from the beginning and I'm just so happy to be um, you know, connected. Thank you, thanks very much. Um, just to give you a context for the interview, I am trying to open up a, con a conversation around work-life balance. Um, it's an elephant in the room. We don't talk about it enough. And perhaps if you're an employee, you are under the perception that it depends on your rota and the responsibility falls in a, on your employer. But more free time does not necessarily ensure a better physical or mental well-being. And if you're an employer, maybe there's the hesitation to talk about work-life balance just because it might weaken the team work ethic. But then you run the risk of employees uh, underperforming because they're at work uh, with a time bomb ticking in some other parts of their lives. And to top all this, we also have the chef culture, which is about martyrdom, about self-sacrifice. I'm sure we'll speak about that mm -hmm. uh, with Maria today. And the chef doesn't eat last. The chef never eats. You know, And all these things make it give us very little clarity about work-life balance, which is why I wanted to bring Maria to the table to bring her insights, her wisdom, and her experience with Cooks Who Care. Mm -hmm. so thank you once again. Um, I wanted to ask you just by way of introduction to the Love Letters to Chefs community, what was your journey to creating Cooks Who Care? You know, I, I was inspired by the sacrifice that we made as a family. Um, you know, my husband, uh, Scott, is a chef by trade, and I uh, was in different facets as far as um, hotels, country clubs, and educator, uh, teaching the next generations to get involved in this as a career. Um, and, you know, you have friends in the industry for so long, just because that's the way the life goes. If you have one day off, you know, who are you hanging out with? People who have similar schedules. You know, um, I find a lot of people in the industry actually had a lot of friendships with hairdressers and people who worked in hospitals because guess what? They have similar schedules too. Um, and I just thought, oh, maybe that's just the way it is or that's my friendship circle um, and found out that many people uh, found it easy to have a partner who was in those careers because the schedules matched up. Um, you know, it's hard for somebody that has a nine to five job, although I have heard of instances that happening um, to be in a relationship with somebody. But when we had interviewed individuals about their relationships with others, their friends, their families, their their, their partners, people they lived with, um, you know, these challenges came up. And they're doing things that were unlike many of the careers that people had where balance was a thing, right? People were sleeping in their cars, waiting for their partner to get out of work, or people, you know, were um, completely shifting their sleep schedules and waking up in the middle of the night so that they could uh, kiss their, their partner before they went to sleep or, you know, spend time with their animals, you know, before they went to bed and are eating at 2 a.m., you know, because uh, that's when they got done. And your your entire body responds, your emotional response responds. And Cooks Who Care came out of a frustration uh, seeing friends and loved ones either, you know, develop um, addictions um, or just are, are working themselves so much that you see them, you know, not having full color in their face or not eating, as you mentioned, especially if they're opening a restaurant, you know, you don't see them for three months, um, you know, and, and just the sacrifices you witness others making. It was when people would um, either be competitive about how much they were losing 
um, meaning I, um, I've sacrificed 70 hours, you know, this week, that's nothing. I've sacrificed 85. And then someone's like, I haven't, you know, and they go on and on. And I was like, is this a real conversation? <laughs> this is not natural. We shouldn't be competing who gave up more. We should actually be giving uh, a new dialogue to say, hey, like, are you okay? Like, that's a lot on an individual and almost inhuman. Um, and giving permission to a new dialogue. So a group of friends wrote down on a piece of paper, why wouldn't somebody um, take par participate in self-care? And why wouldn't somebody get involved with Cooks Who Care that that addresses those issues. And we wrote it all down on a brainstorm piece of paper. I remember the night very clearly. And a lot of it came around this guilt we feel. A guilt of saying no, a guilt of not being with, um, a, a guilt also of the culture, not, it was all these guilt pieces of like, I'm not doing enough to be in order to be successful. I'm not I'm going to have to say no to my friends again because I can't hang out with them. And there was a guilt and like, oh, yes, I can do it. And they would do everything they could to try to just have that moment or experience with friendships, which is a bucket you need to fill for yourself. Um, and then they'd go, oh, I can't do it. I'm so sorry. You know, things got backed up at work. It doesn't mean they didn't want to. You know, so it was all of these things that these feelings I would collect from people. We interviewed people on a YouTube channel just to understand the stories um, and collect uh, uh, qu qualitative data um, and just share to say, listen, I really need you to, to be humble here, which I'm not saying they're not. I'm just saying, can you share your humility with me and share the, 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 the things that you probably don't talk about and you just suppress because that's the way it's supposed to be. And we were able to interview a hundred people. So um, with a lot of convincing, <laughs> but once they were there, you know, we really wanted to connect them to say, listen, your story is going to share an entirely new dialogue. People need to hear. Um, we need to speak up and say it you know, with each other so we can normalize a new conversation. And I love how Cooks OK has created that community because like you said, no one can relate to, no one outside the industry, well, maybe not all industries, but no one else can relate to what we go through. So that has been, I'm sure, very valuable to your community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I want to ask after all this time, have you settled on a definition of work-life balance and ah. like uh, when you were, when you worked as a chef to strike a balance between work and personal life? I like to say work-life harmony because if we do balance, the scale doesn't equal out. It's not 50-50 or to tear it to zero, right? Um, and to do that, I feel that people need to do incremental things. We can't change something drastically overnight although we know that people in our lives demand our time and they crave it uh, they crave it from us um, I think that's really important to acknowledge it's not just our own journey but the to create balance it's also about the relationships you have in your life so um, you, know, you know a lot of people who get divorced or break up with their partners or um, you know, just really struggle with family time, miss those uh, 50th anniversaries for their families or weddings of their best friends uh, for life. Like I, I've heard so many of these stories that people give up for, but the balance piece is saying, let's say it's a ratio, right? If, if you're out of balance, it probably most likely with the demands that our industry um, says you have to do, right, is 90-10, right? 90% 90 of your time you're spending at your job, you're, you're giving that much of your life existence to the craft, to a business, um, or to yours, you know, if you own it. And 10% of that, if you think about all the things you have to do in your life, you got to go to the doctor, 
right? You got to get checkups and stay healthy, especially during this time. Um, you you got to work on your, your finances. You got to go grocery shopping. You know, if you have a pet, you might want to do something with them. You have your friends. Oh, can I meet for coffee? Uh, you have, you know, all these things. Maybe I want to go for a hike. I want to go to this place I haven't been to and I need to do some self-care today. I want to work out. Okay, so all of a sudden, all this stuff is fit into 10% of your life during a given week. And guess what most people want to do on their day off? <laughs> I'm going to watch TV. You know, I, I worked so much this week. I can't, I can't get, you know, yes, you do need to rebound. I'm not saying don't sleep. But to, to get the balance of it. What if we just switched it to 85-15 at first? All right, you know what? This week I'm going to set up all of my prep and I'm actually going to delegate to someone else some of these things. And I'm actually going to learn how to say no to some stuff because we are yes people. We are last on our lists. We struggle with, um, again, it's, there is an attachment to guilt that I am not a psychologist, but I wish a psychologist would study this, you know, in our field. But we have, a, because we give and serve everyone else, it is for the customer, 150%. I also feel that the balance needs to be a little rework where we're like, yes, the customer is important and we serve them to the best degree of ourselves. But at the same time, I cannot do it with this energy level. I have to go, maybe my hours are reduced in my operation. Maybe um, I offer uh, pre-scheduled days off where my team knows about it in advance so they can make plans. Right. Um, and it's these little things that I say with balance. It's like, think about what makes you feel fulfilled. Right. And just try one thing. If it's being with your family, if it's um, contacting a friend, video chat, you don't even have to go get coffee anymore. <laughs> you can just call someone, you know, and even that 30 minutes, like whatever fills your bucket of happiness. You, we have to think about dropping a coin in, in that one. Um, and, and, and then also know and tell yourself, you know what, I do everything I can to be my best and saying these positive messages to ourselves to go, and that's enough. And I need to do this too. And it's okay. Yes. And in, when, when you worked as a chef, was it um, something you, you were striving to do all the time? Yes. Um, I think because there was this definition of, of what success was, I always struggled with, you know, but I want to be with my family and I want to have a baby and I want to, you know, uh, share a, a sentiment with people that I, that I didn't have. Um, and I still, str I struggle with workaholism. Um, you know, I, I, I feel I'm always in overdrive and I know people in this industry kind of have similar facets to that. And because I struggle with that personally, I'm aware of it. Right. And I try to make these, these steps on it, but um, it needs a community of people to check you too. Right. Um, you know, my husband sometimes will say, Maria, don't you think you've worked enough today? Uh, and I'm like, Oh my God. Yeah, no, you're right. It's 10 PM. Right. And I, and I'm not even, you know, we're in the industry, you know, I, it's easy to do that in a physical capacity, but also as a, as a business owner and community person, it's easy to be like, Oh my God. Yeah. The time, I wasn't even thinking of the time. So I have to put on my computer an announcement that tells me when the hour is up. And everybody always makes fun of me. They'll be like, oh, your computer tells you. I'm like, it's my time management to tell me I've, I'm done. Like, and it doesn't say, Maria, you're done. It'll say, uh, one o'clock you know or you know it'll announce the hour uh and it, it i have to make these steps for myself so that that awareness piece turns on higher and it's it's a lifelong process because it's it's ingrained in me thank you uh, for sharing that yeah it's the accountability wherever you can find it that's that's what helps in the end mm -hmm. and um how would you see the Work problem of work-life balance now that you run Cooks Who Care from that context of your work and uh, the problems faced by your community, where, does, where, what's the, where is the intersection of poor work-life balance and um, your work now? 
Mm -hmm. I think that because we have been able to grow a community that has normalized a, and continues to normalize a new conversation about your well-being is just as important as everyone else's. And I feel that the sensitivity of our community to serve, I don't want to change that. I just make sure that people will bring themselves just one piece to be and people tell me, um, you know, they'll tell me like, oh, I love this story about this person or they'll connect with me. And it's always one person at a time, you know, maybe two people at a time. They saw a post. Um, they'll connect with me about um, an idea. Oh, I was thinking about this. And that's how it evolves. You know, the, the community piece of it had to be the necessary vessel because we understand each other so well. But at the same time, we need to be inspired by people who are doing it different. Because if we keep hearing these stories of, um, you know, Michelin star chefs, you know, committing suicide because the demands are too much, do we just go, oh, that's sad, you know, or do we just go like, well, that's just the way the industry is. We have to stop that. We're, we're normalizing a conversation uh, to say that there's a message being shared here. And when those Michelin star chefs actually started saying, you know what, I'm going to close my operations for this amount of time, or I'm going to make sure that my team goes on vacation, and I'm going to make sure they use their vacation time as an employer, because that's another nudge. That we, we are going to have to, as a community, continue to, to push, in a sense, towards this healthier state because it's not natural yet, mm. right? I do believe that there will be a time where, like, remember when <laughs> we didn't do any of this? It's like every new generation, right? Um, like a, a grandparent saying, um, well, back in my day, this is, this is what I did during this time period. I have a deep respect for that. But guess what? Every generation should have it easier. Isn't that, isn't that the way? Yes, and I sort of feel that the gener previous generations of chefs are sort of counting on us to take the industry forward and, you know, we are at a very difficult situation and not just this was before the pandemic. So they're counting on us to take it forward into well, the future where it's sustainable as a profession. It's still sustainable. Yeah. Or even yeah. more sustainable, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's just amazing because we don't know how to behave differently. We don't. And so that's why the community is so important as the facilitator, because you, you need to hear in a supportive way that like we care about you you can do this like if it's a motivation piece to just get you over that next hurdle let's just jump one at a time i i don't believe that we should set um bars that are way too high for ourselves we will put them there um but even for you know hey you can jump this one i know you can i know you can get over this and you you can you can do this next step to take care of yourself hey have you made a budget let me introduce you to somebody who can help you with that hey um you know i found out some people had uh, an individual came up to me and said uh oh, man i've developed an autoimmune disease i've i i just was hospitalized like my energy isn't where it used to be and guess what they're doing they're trying to force themselves back into work and all i said casually was Oh man, that's, that's really hard. Um, you know, have you talked to a nutritionist about this yet? Because you can gain energy, you know, through the right resources if they can help advise you in your situation. I don't need to know the specifics, you know, but maybe I can, you know, introduce you to somebody and they're like, that would be great. <laughs> um, I need that. And so I set up an introduction. Like that's how I felt that the facilitation of a community. Yes. You hear these stories of people doing it differently, but also guess what you don't have time for. You don't have time to look it up and Google it, you know? And also like, are they good? You know, we, we vet people to say, I have conversations with every single person that I refer to say, Hey, let me understand about your business more. Or I personally like, you know, some of the services they have and think that that would benefit people in our community, given the time they have, the money they may have. Um, and I think about like, what resources does our community have there and their limitations? And then think about businesses that could work really well together. 
Um, so that dot connection, you know, skill set really has integrated how we can help people because it can be replicated. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, do you have any advice for chefs who want to improve the quality of their lives? One, one piece of advice. I always say frame the question, what can I do tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Because that is the most achievable um, action that anyone can do, right? And if you can't do it by tomorrow, then maybe that's a little bit longer goal right? If you say, I want to read more books, pick a day and time you're going to do it, put it in your calendar, right? I'm going to, um, you know, spend time with my family, make a date, tell them you're going to do it, and then follow through with it and put it in your calendar. Mm -hmm. um, or set up that text message, you know, that tells the person I'm going to do it. Um, and I also say it was a good support system for you. Mm -hmm. um, I verbalized a lot of my goals to, you know, my husband is my, my confidant for that. Or I have a friend that I say, this is what I need to do for myself. And I do that because I want them to call me out on when I'm not living up to it. Or I'm, I have that overdrive, you know, clicked in and my gears are turning really hard. Um, I think if I say, what can I do tomorrow? Because I can, I'm very good at setting goals, but they're like way out here. And when I bring it back, I go, oh, you know what I just need to do for me? I, I journal every weekend on Saturday and Sunday in the morning. I wake up 30 minutes before my son wakes up. <laughs> Sometimes that's 630. And guess what? I'm not sleeping in, but I have my coffee like this. I have a place where I put my journal. I have a sitting spot. My pen is next to it. I put my mise en place together for my me time. And it's only 30 minutes and it's only two days a week. And I never say I have to do it two days. Sometimes I only do it one, but I have to do it at least once where there's a habit I'm forming for myself. And it was my one thing I could do tomorrow. Yeah. I love that we have again come back to accountability because that's and you've also highlighted um, how you you can do the organization really well at work, but then it has to follow through in your personal life and your personal goals and ambitions as well. So <laughs> thank right. you. Yeah, I tell my son, he's in plastic, he goes, don't tell me that. I said, it <laughs> everything in its place. It's a very necessary thing. And our personal lives can have the same mise en place. Yes, yes. Thank you. Um, and do you have a piece of advice for employers, something that they can do without, say, not much risk to help their have the well work life balance of their staff. I think the reflection for them is key because um, they think that everything takes too much time and costs too much money. And I think putting some reality could take you to say, let me look at the schedule. How can I this out so people maybe get two in a row? How can I um, you know look at the needs on our menu? and say, you know what, let's, let's not do 15 items. Let's, let's scale that back a little bit because the kitchen team could do it in a shorter time frame and then have more time for themselves. So I think that there's um, some time management things that could just easily be resolved with a 15 to 30 minute or a three hour block in one day, you know, and just go, you know what, on Monday, I am going to do this and figure this out and plan for the rest of the month. And sometimes that means not giving as much to the customer. You know, you may say, could I still service them in a way that feels like I'm giving them everything I have, but it also is achievable by the team within the time frame of a week that I have for them to be here. And if the two of them don't, like two magnets don't match up where you're like, no, they got to come in an extra, you know, two hours this week, then that's where you need to rethink is what I'm doing do, or does what I'm doing make sense with the team I have, the physical space I have and the time I have. Mm, thank you. That's really valuable. Um, it's just head down thinking about what you want as well, right? It's not just what works or what you want to work, but then what do I want as well? I want for myself and my team. Mm -hmm. It's really powerful, powerful way to approach it without making the customer the end 
result of everything, the choices and the actions that you take, the choices you make and the intentions. So thank you. Thanks. That's really valuable. Where can, which is the best place for Love That Institution Chefs um, for the community to be able to connect with your work? Is it going to your website and your social media pages? We're redoing our website. It's going to be beautiful. So pretty soon, yes, you can go to cookswhocare.org. It's in the process here. Uh, but I would definitely follow on our social media channels for the most up-to-date information. Instagram, uh, Cooks Who Care, Facebook, Cooks Who Care. And we also have a private community uh, that people can engage with, with some of these more personal conversations, um, which we have about almost 550 people um, involved in and it, it's growing I keep getting like one or two people a week um, uh, say yes to the rules that you're gonna abide by the rules in there otherwise you don't get in uh, but I, I want to make sure that it's a safe community for everybody and people who skip over that I, I don't allow in because you have to promise I'm gonna abide by by these rules here so um, people enjoy that because they can feel connected and uh, I, I hope to see everybody there is it open to chefs all over the world or is it just for those in Philadelphia? Oh, great. I'm going, to, I'm going to ask you for the link and post it below this video. Yeah, it'd be great. It, it just say yes to the rules and then you're in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Maria. Thank you so much for sharing all these insights and just so much of so many things for chefs and um, those who run food businesses to think about. Thank you. You're I really appreciate it. You're doing such important work and it is important for us to rally together and to connect our ideas and share resources. So anything anyone needs uh, that Cooks Who Care can support on, I want to do that 100% um, and uplift, you know, what you're doing with the community to ours. Um, I, I've really seen people loving the the reading the posts that you <laughs> share and all you provide this intention and it's, it's so warm and loving. Um, I just have to say that for everybody. Like, I love what you're doing. <laughs> thank you, Maria. Thank you. And thank you for being a part of it. Right from, I think you were the first uh, person I connected with on my journey here. So yeah. thank you for being part of this journey. And thank you. Thank you for yeah, taking your time. Ear hugs. <laughs> Big hug. <laughs> Big hug from London. Yes. <laughs> thank, thank you for having me. Thank you. Thanks everyone for watching.